Yes, Old Trafford! Let's make some noise if you hate John Wilkin! Come on, you can do better than that. We all hate him. Make some noise if you hate John Wilkin! That's better, that's better. Look, I can see you guys queuing up to get some beers and so on. John Wilkin is getting paid £10,000 today by Sky Sports. £10,000 to do a bit of telly in the stadium there. So he's not with us for the podcast. But I've got my beautiful friend Mark Flanagan, everybody. There's two people clapping, Mark. Three, three people clapping. Four people clapping. Se seven Come people clapping. Come on, give clapping. me a bit. <laughs> and look, please give a big Old Trafford welcome. You can boo him as well because he used to play for Catalan and Wigan and Warrington. Jerome Gise! <laughs> <laughs> Some pantomime boos. How many Saints fans we got down here right now? Are there any Catalan fans? Any Catalan fans? Are there any Catalan Dragon fans? Oh, okay. There's, there's, there's two or three. That's all. That'll do. That'll do for us. Listen, Mark, what a day. What a day it's we're It's a great here. You day. Look fantastic, by the way. I try my best, you know. Um, it's a great day. It's one that I used to come and watch it with a family as a young kid. And um, I know the, the boys playing tonight will be so excited. Really, really nervous right now. Um, you know, when you, you build up a full season towards today, um, there's a lot of anxiety in the change rooms, I reckon. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of nerves there. But the boys will be, you just can't wait to get out there. By the way, if you're not having a beer, if you're not drinking, you are allowed to come all the way down here. Don't be shy if you want to come down the front. You, I know you're just queuing for the toilets. There's more people queuing for the toilets than there are queuing for us. That's how it feels. That's where, we, that's where we've got to, guys. Uh, you could also come and bring us a beer if you want down the front as well. That would be great. We've got some signed, signed goodies to throw at you, so otherwise I'm just going to throw them on the floor and <laughs> you'll just have to run and come and get them. Uh, Jerome, talk to us. Look, and it was great to have you on the podcast this week. What's this like for Catalan Dragons these, this day, this day at Old Trafford? Because Steve McNamara was saying it, wasn't he? He said the anxiety, everything was there for that semi-final against Hull KR. Now they're here and he says they can play with, with freedom. Can you see them upsetting the party, the Saints party today? Yeah, definitely. I think it's a massive game, obviously. But I definitely think that they'll play without any pressure. I think that the pressure was in, uh, in the semi-final last week. I think today, obviously... Uh, Looking at the bookies, um, Saints are massive odds on, like favourites. So I just hope that they have like a um, just a good day, enjoy themselves, show what they're capable of, and I just fancy an upset really more than anything. What will that do to the Catalan players though, when when they know Saints are the odds on favourites? That surely that plays into their hands, doesn't it? Yeah, it will do. It will do to a degree, but I just think that they they got enough experience within the side to, uh, especially in the spine, to uh, to cope with big games. Uh, They've got quite a few young players, young French players, sorry, that have tasted success in the Challenge Cup. They've got quite a bit of experience. However, like today, they're not favourites. Saints have won the last two editions or the, the last two uh, Super Leagues. So odds on favourites, but on one game, 80 minutes, anything's possible. We've got some new friends down the front. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Here we go. You can't come down the front, by the way. Just hide your beer. Just say I said so. Just hide your beer in your jacket. Uh, uh, look, Mark, you, you've obviously been to the grand final with St. Helens. You played halfback, everyone. Who remembers Mark Flanagan playing halfback in, in Old Trafford? We, we won as well, Will. I, I might add, we did win. He doesn't win. mention it much. He doesn't like to mention it much. Uh, and, of course, you were here with Salford as well. But, look, no one's done it three on the trot since Leeds. They're the only team to have done it. All against Saints as well, weren't they? So Saints will know what that's, what that's like. How, how massive would it be to do a hat-trick for St. Helens? It'd be brilliant because it... It'd... It marked the success of Saints over a long period of time, which is, is very difficult difficult to do. You know, teams have won one or two, but to do it three times really cements your legacy as, as a club and a team. I think it's I think Saints the team under pressure. Uh, everyone expects them to, to win today, and the, with that with that expectation comes a little bit of pressure on the shoulders. Um, and I, I think probably Saints are a better team, but I, there's half of me fancies Catalan to win. Even though I'm a Saints fan, I am a Saints fan. Um, I do have a sneaking suspicion Catalan with a big game experience James Maloney has won so many trophies and won so many big games throughout his career and this being his swan song the romantic in me thinks that he might he might bring it home for Catalan but 
you know, they always say never out right off the Saints. And, you know, the way that Alex Warren has been playing, Lachlan Coote, James Roby still plays like he's 22 years old. You know, it's, it's going to be a great game and I, I can't wait for it. He did say he wants St. Helens to win, yeah, by the way. He said he had a sneaky feeling that beans. Catalan might win. He wants to, though. He wants to. Uh, look, you gave a great answer on the podcast when we spoke in the week about what it means to be from Catalonia, you know, to be a Catalan. And it, as we said before, geographically, you're right close to the border. You're the last French city before the Spanish border. Just tell everyone here who's literally never been down there, doesn't know much about Perpignan, give us that answer again of what it feels like to these fans who've travelled over today. I just think that is, it's just like for the Catalan people. I mean, it's not just the Catalan supporter. I think it's the whole entire people of Catalonia that will be behind the team. And for us to win the trophy tonight, it'll be just, just one more thing above winning the Super League. It'll be doing it for our people, doing it for, for Rugby League, but doing it for, a, for, for, for an entire crowd of people that, that are fighting very hard for, for different causes, aside from Rugby League as well. So it's a big, big occasion. I just... I just fancy the guys to, uh, to rise to the occasion and doing it tonight. Do you know what you said the other week as well, the, this week I should say, which I thought was fascinating, is a bit like where Perpignan is, because everyone thinks south of France and they think Saint-Tropez and they think Nice and they think Cannes and they think the film festival. Perpignan's not that. It's a working class city in France, isn't it? And it's almost as forgotten as Northern England and people from Northern England feel. It, there are a lot of similarities between the two regions. Yeah, there's a lot of similarities. I mean, like... Um, it's not a third world country, like it's far from it, obviously. But it's not, it's not Nice, it's not Monaco, it's not. Wit Witness is a third world country. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone from Witness here this evening? No, it's okay. We can keep slagging Witness off. Not allowed in. Um, no, yeah, it's it, there's there's a lot going on there that that showcase that we are we are very much like a working class um, region. I think it showcases. I mean, it shows in the way that we play and the way that we behave as as supporters of um, of the Catalan Dragons. I'm just, I just think that the staff this year and the last two or three years have showcased that very, very well. I think that we work hard, we showcase it on the field, and I think that it's a proper, it's a really, really good way to um, to showcase like a lot of hard work over the last three or four years to come to Old Trafford tonight and, and hopefully put our hands on the trophy. Mark, just tell everyone what this night is like. Bearing in mind we're, what, 90 minutes until kickoff. Yeah. You've been here. I know you've been here. Obviously, with, with Salford, it would have been a different experience for you. But that moment right now in the changing rooms, and, you know, Wilco's talked about coming out that tunnel at Old Trafford. But you get down here a few hours before. And what, what are those, those hours like in terms of build-up to this final? It's, it's a weird, really weird experience, to be honest. So it's, it's a mixture of pure excitement, because it's something you've dreamt of as a kid. It's... Anxiety, it's nervousness, it's a feeling of not wanting to let your teammates and your family down. All the supporters have paid good money to be here, you don't want to let them down. But there's that really tangible feeling of the trophy at the end of it. And um, yeah, it's, 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 it's hard to describe, to be honest. It's, it's not until you walk through that tunnel and you hear the fans and you walk into the crowd and there's goosebumps, goosebumps upon goosebumps on the back of your neck and the game kicks off that that you, those anxieties, that excitement, it's all released because you're just in the moment and then the game goes as quick as a flash. Um, and before you know it, you're either lifting a trophy or you're crying your eyes out. And um, it's it's a special feeling and I'm, I'm very envious of the players tonight. Um, it's something they'll never forget. And, you know, there's, there's, there's great narratives, there's great stories for both teams. For Saints to do three on the trot is, is unbelievable. It really cements their legacy as a team, like I said. But for Catalan to to really you know push them into that you know, that bracket of one of the the, four, the the previously four teams to win it um, is a massive achievement as well, and really puts them on that on that threshold as, of one of the big clubs. So there's there's massive stories for both teams, and you know I, I can't wait for it. Obviously, these St Helens fans will know all about Sam Tompkins from the Good Friday derbies and what he did in Super League and what he did with Wigan. When he first signed for Catalan Dragons, there was all that criticism. He's just going there, he's finished, he's injured, he wants a final paycheck and so on. To be man of steel, has that even surprised you to go down there and play the way that he's played the last couple of years? I don't think it surprised me. I think that over the last three years, his showcase was he's brought to the team. I think that this year is... This year he's added that extra layer of confidence to the to the whole group and the whole squad. I think that he's showcased time and time again his consistency, his leadership. A lot of good things that have come off the back of, of Sam has transformed the club, or the, not the club, but the team itself this year. 
I think it's, um, yeah, a lot of people had doubts and a lot of questions four years ago when we signed Sam, but I think that speaking to him personally as well, that he enjoys it so much, he likes the people so much, he likes the region so much, that it's, it's, it's a great present to a degree for him to be in the grand final today and to be, um, to be walking onto the pitch or running into the pitch as, as, as the reigning man of steel, I think is an added, is an added value and I'm, I'm, I'm just really happy for, for the whole team to have the whole team and the whole club to have someone like this that, that really portrays the value of the Dragons. And in terms of Sam, obviously he missed the semi-final, didn't he, with an injury, but was in the squad and he missed that game against Hull KR. Catalan needed to be fit tonight, don't they? They need him to step up tonight. But how crucial will his experience be having been here and done it at Old Trafford? I think it's massive, yeah. I think even like a half-fit Sam Tongans you take it for a game like tonight, I think that um, just to relieve the pressure, that, that, that kind of relieving that anxiety that Mark spoke about, you know, the experience of big games, the, the talk, reassuring players whenever something goes wrong, whether, whether something goes right or goes wrong, I think that's, that's invaluable. And I think that just him being on the, on the team sheet and, and him like running onto the pitch is going gonna, gonna to add that extra bit of confidence to the team. And I think that everyone's going to play with that extra 10% we're having him on the team tonight. Look, a lot of the Saints stars were there when you were there, and you haven't been there for a long, long time, but, you know, people like Tommy Makinson, like Johnny Lomax, who are the ones who, for you, are going to stand out tonight? You've had that season that can really make people stand up and watch. Um, I'd say Alex Worms is, I think, he's the most destructive front rower this, of the Super League era. I honestly don't think we've had great front rowers, Fieldens, Peacocks, players like that, but there's, there's none been more destructive than the way Alex Wormsley carries the ball continuously through a game. He's so hard to handle. I've played with him and against him. And he just he's just relentless. The size of him, his leg speed, he will really try and, and put his team on the front foot. So it's massive for Catalan to, to combat that. I'd say he's a big plus. Secondly, Johnny Lomax. Johnny Lomax is a great player in his own right. However, Louis Stordu, I think, has got great potential throughout his career. But coming into the side, having played probably half a season at halfback given his age I think it really needs Johnny Lomax to stand up and take the weight of that playmaking responsibility on his shoulders so when you know there's clutch moments in the game when there's there's great field position and Saints need to score I think Johnny needs to step up and take that responsibility and, and really lead from example from a from a playmaking point of view obviously you had some great years playing for Catalan Dragons you played in the first Super League game that they played in back in 2007 06 06, 06. 06. 06. And you've worked with Steve McNamara. You've been on that coaching team there. 2017, you guys nearly got relegated. The next year, you won the Challenge Cup. You, you know, played in the new camp. And now you're here at this, this showpiece. This was all part of Bernard, the owner's plan, wasn't it, to get here. And I guess for him tonight, this is not the final piece in the jigsaw, but a huge piece to taking that club where he thinks they should be and why he's put so much money into them. Yeah, massively. I think... It it's the right progression, I think, from, uh, from the million pound game that you referred to in 2017, where it was a do or die game. I think that um, at this come to a loss, we've been in a completely different situation now. Obviously, we went on to, to win that game. We cemented our position in the league in 2018, went on to win the Challenge Cup. We built we build in, the, in the background. We've, uh, I think we've, we've really nurtured a lot of young, good players, uh, French players that are coming through the ranks. The likes of Arthur Moore, the likes of Fouad Yaha, guys that are stalwart of, uh, of Super League nowadays, like the likes of um, Ben Garcia and, and, and Julian Bousquet. But I think that there's a lot of, there's a lot of good stuff that has been done by the, the performance staff, sorry, by uh, Steve and his team. But like you said, I think that if it wasn't for the willingness of, um, of Bernard to invest the kind of money that he does and the passion, to give the passion that he has for the club and and for the game, I think that wouldn't be here. Uh, so hats off to him. And, and I think that this would cap like a massive, massive era for the club. And 50 years on, if we win the first trophy in 15 years, I think you, we're not doing too bad. Go on, so just upset all these St. Helens fans here. I mean, you, you, you've seen it. You've seen it in the stars. You've seen a Catalan win. How's it going to pan out this game from when those fireworks go off and we can smell that smoke and the sun starts to go down? It's a brilliant moment at Old Trafford. How's it going to pan out from then at six o'clock until eight? I mean, it's going to be massive. It's the anticipation. I've been uh, personally, I've, I've I've come away from the coaching and the, and the playing. I'm, I'm very much a supporter of the of the game and, and the club in particular. And I've, the anticipation in the last two hours before kickoff is huge. I think 
like uh, like Mark said, like, I've never had the luxury of, of walking out of Old Trafford. I wish I had, but I never did. Uh, the anticipation of going through and watching on TV and being there live is just huge. And adding this, that is that is the Dragons that are playing. I think that a lot of people are going to be feeling the same as me. And I think that it's going to be a great, a great experience, not only for the game, or, sorry, not only for the team, but for the game and the people as a, as a whole. Jerome, it's been brilliant to have you down here. Look, I know you guys don't like him because he's French. I know that. I get it. He's not really French. He's kind of spent time in Wigan and Warrington as well. He sounds a bit like he's from Warrington. They're all booing you down the front here, Jerome. They're all doing. Come on, give us a nice Old Trafford welcome and a goodbye to Mr. Jerome Gisay, everybody. Thank you. Jerome, thank you very much. We're just, gonna, just while we wait for our next guest here, it's going to go down the line. A uh, guy's waiting for the toilet there. Yeah, hi. Is it number one or number two? Number one, just go down the line. It's one, any twos down the line? One, one, one. We've got a two there to the lady there. Two, two queuing up and a one down there. Okay, right. We've got a very special guest for you guys. Put your hands together, everybody, for Mr. Johnny Vegas. Memories like the corners of my mind. How did you get a beer? Johnny, how are you? You know Mark Flanagan, don't you? I do, I do, Mark. Come on, one more time. Johnny Vegas, everybody! That's the real Johnny Vegas. This isn't just someone dressed up. It's a ten-minute interview and five is me trying to climb on a stool without out to lean on. <laughs> Here we go. He's nearly there. Oh! Hey! Johnny, look, this isn't new to you, Old Trafford, the grand final, but what does it mean to you? It never, ever ceases to mean everything to you. Never, ever. I've been at... I've been at Challenge Cup finals where I've been, you know, we've been nilled, we've been this, but I think grand final, what it comes down to, it's not about the shield, let's be honest. You want to win this match. It comes down, it's the absolute pinnacle of everything you've worked for, or the lads have worked for throughout the season. And it's huge. It, you can't take it for granted. I think everyone accept the, the, the best two teams currently in the league are playing. And uh, without, quietly, I'm thinking it'll be Saints Day, but I'm not being arrogant. I'm not being, yay! Yeah! Hey, the only thing that can defeat Saints today is Saints not turning up. Let's play as we played all season. Apart from the magic weekend. <laughs> Look, these lot know, obviously, you're St. Helens through and through, but for those who don't know how you fell in love with Rugby League and how you first started going down watching those Saints teams of the past, just tell everyone how you, it first came into your life. Well, I want to announce publicly, Mel Meninga is my biological dad. I can see that. I can see the resemblance. Everyone thought it was a perm in my formative years. He liked going to crystals, and so did my mum. <laughs> I don't mind the fact he didn't pay child support. You know what I mean? Just meeting him. I knew, I always knew there was a greatness about me. <laughs> that genetically, I was supreme to other woolly backs. <laughs> um, it was, I've always said, it's, it's the centre of the town. And without getting, you know, too deep about it, we've lost industry, we've lost this. We've always had Saints. We've always had that focal point of having a world-class rugby league team. It unites the town. I think it keeps us together. It gives us something to believe in. And um, we are, quite frankly, the best out there. I can't really argue with that, can we? I, I, from, from, my, from my time at Saints, I... I can only echo that. It was um, you, you go around the town, you go around schools, and you'd always see Saint shirts, Saint supporters. They want a picture with you, and it was, it was, it felt you felt great re representing those people because, you know, in the north of England, you don't always get a lot. And I'm from Oldham, which you know has its troubles and has its hard times. So uh, when you when you you put the jersey on, and you see the fans singing the songs, um, and it, it gives you a, 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 such a special feeling for representing the badge and. Yeah, I can only echo what Johnny was saying. And I, I, I would say, sorry to 
in comparison perhaps to some other sports there's a proper community yeah. feeling with yourself and the fans and I think league players properly get out there yeah. and meet the folk who come and support them do you know what I mean they are part of the community and you're not untouchable no. in that way of I, I would love having a pint with a, a fan after a game on a Friday night at the Griffin I'd be with John Wilkin he'd, he'd be getting some shit Fans would be criticising his kicking game from that night. Uh, but I, I, I just tackled so they didn't have much bad to say about me. I'd, um, I'd, I'd, love, I'd love leaving, um, you know, when we beat Wigan at home. 15 times in a row where they go, oh, go off yourself. <laughs> and you go, and a good game to you, sir. <laughs> but then you sit at pub, don't you? Yeah, and you go, you, you, you break down the game, what yeah. happened uh, within the match. But I do honestly, I, 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 I think league... He's so aware of how important it is as a community, as a, what we are, what we live for, what we breathe for. And, and today, you know, when Saints win, we've got to have it. it well, it's, it's, you know what, it's a tough one to call today. It really is. I think it's who turns up, yeah. turns up, you know what I mean, with the mindset of don't change your tactics because it's a final. Plays you've played. Plays you've played all season. Obviously, be mindful defensively. Uh, dragons can come from nowhere, and that and that and that's a dangerous bit. But I, I I think I honestly think the Magic Weekend was a blessing to us. Yeah. And I think a lot of people went right. You know, they're not indestructible, and you go, no, we're not. But that that'll be on every player's mind today, going out. And that's why I'd have to, if I was a bucket, I'd I'd, I'd give it to Saints today. But I think first 10 minutes will be very telling. Yeah, yeah. But both packs will be going for each other big time. Yeah. Yeah. And if it's not, I think if it comes down to a, you know, like hardly any tries, I think Saints defence will hold and I think we'll just want it back somebody. The way we can chuck the ball, always with Saints, it's when they play with confidence, they're frustrating and they're brilliant. And... Don't try and win it up here, win it here. Yeah. How special, Johnny? We talked about, you know, Saints going for the hat-trick, doing it three times out of three and matching that brilliant Leeds team. And when you think back to, you know, we talked to John Wilkin this week, didn't we? No one likes John Wilkin here, even though he had some good years for St. Helens. But, you know, five defeats on the trot. I'm sure you were here for some of those games at Old Trafford. And, and that mentality and that that gets in your head. But to be able then to, to match the lead side, to go three out of three, what would that mean to the club and to the history of St. Helens? Well, I, well I, I, like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we haven't come away with the shield. I think, uh, you know, without talking out of order, sometimes when we finish top, we get complacent. And I think now, it's that thing of, once we've got something to prove, Saints always tend to, you know what I mean, bring something extra on the day. To win the treble, um, I mean, Roby, pound for pound, one of the best players ever, but... Is he even human? I don't know if he's human. Well, the thing is... There's something different about that guy. If you talk to him, he can't count to five. <laughs> but, but the way he plays, for the tackles, Roberta, that mind, everything that you got where you go, do it for the town, but do it for Roby. To go out on a treble, I think Leeds felt the same way when they went out. They were losing massive players, and you go, right, this is the year. You know what I mean? If, 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 if he plays another the season, great. If he doesn't, let's show him off in style. I mean, I'm, I'm doing a Louis testimonial. I'm just going to put a cardboard cut out of him up there and ask, ask, ask people through our darts. <laughs> Look, we I hate Louis because he keeps knocking me out of the balls. <laughs> <laughs> we talked to you about what it's like to play in this game, right? Yeah. And I'm just one that's just come back to me. That 2014 grand final when Mark Flanagan played halfback, by the way, if you didn't know. The Ben Flower moment. What was that? I mean, it was about three minutes in. It, I imagine it's the kind of stadium, it's the kind of atmosphere that you can do something crazy that makes you, it makes you feel completely different to those other regular season games that you played at your own, on your own patch. Yeah. Well, Johnny said it perfectly. I think you've got to do what's worked for you all year. And if, if you're too psyched up, something like that might happen. 
you know, we've got to hope something like that doesn't happen tonight. But I think it's about both teams sticking to the process and, and what's worked for them all year. Obviously, some people might get too hyped up. They might do something silly because of the atmosphere and the occasion. But you'd hope that the senior players in both teams will be able to calm the boys, get them on the right page. So there's not an incident like we saw, saw that year. And, you know, it probably helped me win that, that night and Saints win that night. But, um, yeah, hopefully we don't see something like that again. How I think I, I can never, because I can't put myself in that place. I've gigged, but with something like that, where you're going, uh, when it's been tried and tested all season, yeah. it's still the big one game that it comes down to. Yeah. And like you say, putting too much pressure on yourself, making one, you know, silly mistake, or thinking that the game's run away from you too soon, where you go, Locked down, remember everything you've done in, you know what I mean? Everything you've done in training, yeah, all that, of that. And that's why Saints are probably you know, the favourites for lots of reasons, but they've been there and done it two years on the trot. So, you know, when the, the going gets tough tonight, when there might be a few points down or the pressure's on them, they've got that belief in them that they've done it and they know how to do it again. It's not like it's, it's unknown territory for Catalan. They've not been in this situation for a long time. So apart from the likes of Tompkins and Maloney that they've won trophies, it is unknown, so... When the pressure's on them and they're defending the line, I think it's they're more likely to crack than if Saints are in the similar situation. But I, I'm, I'm always worried. Like, I know we, we took the mickey out of them, but one year, it had to be Warrington's year, didn't it? it what, what, it you will know, be. the Wolves at Wembley. No, it was like, why, why was it our year? <laughs> why couldn't they have turned over Wigan? <laughs> Pie-eating gits. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I've said it before and I'll say it again. I went for a job interview in Wigan and there was a chippy with a sign up that says close for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> they deserve notes. <laughs> but I, I, I've, I've not been on that kind of stage, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and collective, like you say, you need a couple of eld heads yeah. in amongst who can calm it down if the start of the match hasn't gone your way. But I think if they, I think we proved this season, defensively, we've been uh, immense. I mean, it's weird as a lad watching, I was talking to our kid before, the, the, when, when we did Bradford 8 6 in that final on the Millwall. First time I'd ever seen Saints defend. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? It was a it. shocker. Yeah. <laughs> it's a rarity. It was a shocker, but you're going, they're not going to get over. I had absolute belief we were going to let him in. If we do what we've done all season, on paper, we should win today. But when does it ever go your way yeah. when it's league? It's, it's the most... Today's a proper daunting one. So I'm not going to mouth off. I'm not going to do out to wind up Catalan. I, I just want it. I really want it. I think we all want it as a town. I want it for the club. And um, I want Saints to be Saints. There we go. A good place to leave it, everybody. Look at all these St. Helen fans. Let's hear it for Mr. Johnny Vegas. <laughs> Don't. You know what? Twice this week, two scaffolders have mistook me for Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Johnny and Ricky! Johnny. <laughs> Ricky! And you're going... He's got a personal trainer. <laughs> Look at me. It'd be well gutted. You're looking good. Oh, you said you'd never been on that stage. If you were, what position would I, you be? But you know, before this you... interview, I insisted that you talk about that immense 10 minutes I played at Kevin's testimonial. <laughs> Johnny, you really appreciate no, it. Nice lesson. Have a great day. Come on, Saints! Yes, Johnny, top man. Thank you, mate. Good to see you again, mate. One more time, everybody. Johnny Vegas! It was going to rug me and then he smelt my breath. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Look, we've got some more people down the front here. So you can come down the front, everybody, if you want to come down and get a bit closer and see how good-looking Mark Flanagan used to be. He used to be a 10 out of 10 before he started playing rugby league. Now he's a 9 and a half. Look, from one comedian to another... I know, you, I know he plays for Warrington. But put your hands together, everybody, for the presenter of the last leg, if you haven't seen it, the star of the Warrington PDRL side, 
Mr. Adam Hills. Hello. Hi. Adam, how you doing? Hey, how you going? Good to see you. No, Good thanks to, for having look, me. you got the pressure now. You just followed another comedian onto the stage in front, but in front of someone's fans who they're not your own. <laughs> <laughs> Good That's luck. Great. It's really set the tone now, hasn't it? <laughs> Good night. I want to tell you guys something. You, you're the one with the microphone. You, you can speak louder than that. I don't think I can. And now I've got Johnny Vegas just staring me down. Taunting you at the Just front. staring me down. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. So I played, I played for Warrington in the, the physical disability team. No, you'll like the end of this story. <laughs> I played against Leeds at Headingley and I got knocked out during the game. So I was, I was unconscious for a couple of minutes on the pitch. When I was taken to Leeds Infirmary and I was taken straight back to Leeds train station to go back to London. Yeah. Still in my kit. So I was still in my kit because I hadn't got changed from the game. I'd just been unconscious. I'm walking through Leeds and these five guys behind me just started singing, Oh, wanky, wanky. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, am I still unconscious? I'm not entirely sure what's going on. But your, your commitment to that... Where's Vegas gone? Vegas is, is gone. You've got rid of him. He's You've taken the whole him. family. He's, got his, he's turned at, everybody. He's Ricky Gervais. Look at his entourage. The amount of times I've had to wrestle, wrestle him off stage naked. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny came up to me in, when we were doing shows in Rio and he went, I was looking at some photos the other day and I found one of you wrestling me off stage naked. <laughs> and I thought, it must be Edinburgh. <laughs> and then I realised it was Nottingham. <laughs> and then he paused and went, how many times have you wrestled me naked? <laughs> the honest truth is, Johnny, I've lost count. To which the answer, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Look, your story is brilliant, Adam, and you do so much for the game and obviously for the, the PDRL side of things as well. Just for those people who don't know here, you live in London, right? Yep. You travel up. I don't know if you're still doing it now, whatever, because you've, you've just won the grand final, by the way, again, two years out of three. Yeah. Turns out sometimes it's our year. Can you give someone else a chance? <laughs> but you travel up from London every Tuesday for training, which, is, which I find, I mean, it's a, that's a long old journey. I don't, you must stay up and have to get back down Wednesday morning. Well, we, change, we now train on a Monday and a Wednesday. So I've been coming up to Warrington on a Monday, staying over for a couple of nights, training on the Wednesday as well, then going back to London. But, but the thing is, you know what it's like. You all love rugby league, right? Yeah, we do. So I grew up in Australia with one leg, I played rugby league until I was about 13 or 14, but then a one-legged guy playing rugby league can't keep up with everybody else. Mm. But then when I found out, even at the age of 47, that I could go back to playing rugby league again <laughs> against people with similar disabilities, I just jumped at it. So yeah. I kind of figure at this age, like I'm 51, an injury now is an injury for life. And I'd much rather it happen on the rugby pitch than bending over to pick yeah. up the remote control. What, what I love about the, the PDRL side at Warrington, and we've done loads of it on the podcast, and we've had plenty of guests on over the couple of series. I, I can't remember his name, so you'll have to remind me, but there's someone, one of your teammates who had a, an awful cycling accident. Yes. And, and he had an amputation. Yes. And he had to come back, because he, he wanted to come back and play for the team. And the hits he was getting, and this is the kind of hits that you're taking as well, he had to have a re-amputation on that same leg. And yes. his wife was so devastated, you know, she didn't want him to play rugby and have any more injuries that she hid his prosthetic leg. She hid the leg. She <laughs> hid. So he turned up at training one night on crutches, and I was like, where's your leg? And he went, she's hidden it. <laughs> so I went over to the car and went, have you really? She said, yeah. And I went, whereabouts? And she said, somewhere he'll never look. <laughs> and I went, where? She said, the washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the same. Like, everyone in our team, you know, played rugby for a certain amount of time, was told that we couldn't play it anymore, and now we've got this chance to play again. But the weird thing is, as you know, when you're playing against someone with a disability, you've got to take that disability into account. Yeah. So our, our captain, Jason's just over there. One of our first training sessions, Jay said to me, right, I'm going to offload to you, the next play, offload to you, you run at Tony's left shoulder. 
And I went, okay, why his left shoulder? And he went, because he hasn't got a hand on that side. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, right, you forget that you... Our coach, Sean Yeah, you Briscoe, can take advantage of it, can't you? You'd be, you'd be stupid not to. Exactly. If you're yeah. playing against any other rugby league player who isn't disabled, you look at them and you go, what's their yeah. weak spot? Well, they'd yeah. go down your left side, wouldn't they? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we had Sean Briscoe came and played with us once and just went, lads, you're doing this all wrong. If there's a guy running at you with one arm, then step him on that side. Mm. <laughs> what I find really impactful as well, and it's something you said before, but I think it really kind of sums up what you're doing and why it's so important as well, not just to the, to the people that are playing, but to inspire people, is that you know your whole life, you were born without a right foot, right? Yes, so this yeah. isn't something that's happened to you in adult life. This is something you've always been used to. But you've always had, I guess, people being sort of sympathetic with you, like, oh, Adam, you know, and that. But actually, this is the one thing that you can do where there's no sympathy on that pitch because everyone's trying to absolutely smash each other. So you're all on a level playing field. Absolutely. First game we played, a guy with cerebral palsy tried to run past me down the wing. And as he did, I kind of looked at him and I thought, he is really fast, but he's not stable. Like, if he gets past me, I can't catch him, but I reckon I could push him over with a finger. And it's such a weird <laughs> process to go through because yeah. you think, I, here's something I've learned, all right? I would have thought it would be easier to tackle someone with cerebral palsy. It's actually harder. It's slippery. You, know, you don't know where their limbs are going to go. <laughs> and neither do they. Like, they run at you and you're like, what are you? And they're like, I don't know what's going to happen. We're both confused. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, but you're exactly right. No one on that pitch has sympathy for anybody else. No one goes easy on them because of their disability. We all play as hard as we can. So, and that's what you appreciate that. You know, when you, get, when you walk off with fractured ribs, you know you've earned them. Do you know what I love about that? The, the player that you, you mentioned before who, who had to have his leg re-amputated. So to put yourself in that situation that you're going that hard, that you've got to have further surgery, shows you how much they love competing and playing sport. And it kind of, it, it makes you think of how much you should value the ability to play a sport at whatever level and whatever format it is. It's a real honour and a real privilege and something you should never take for granted because it's, it's one of the best things you can do in life is to compete with some you know, like-minded individuals for, towards a common goal. It's, it's pretty special, isn't it? And to be doing it at 51. No, no offence, <laughs> you know what I mean? To be actually playing that level. And, and I know the big hope was to, to be playing in the World Cup. And I wanted to ask you about that because that, to me, we had John Dutton on, didn't we? Uh, you yep. know, organiser, basically, of, of what's happened with the World Cup and desperately tried to get it on. And we know what happened with Australia and New Zealand. And we know what happened to the professional teams. But also for you guys as well and the preparation that you put in and the stage that that would have given you yeah. How, how devastated were you when you saw that news? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it means for me I don't have to pick which team I'm going to represent just that yet. That is true. What did, what did Sean Briscoe say to you? Sean Briscoe wants me to make myself eligible for England. Yeah. Either, play, either uh, want to win the World Cup or play for the country that you're from. So it's <laughs> yeah. one of them. What do you that pick? That was exactly it. But had you made the choice? Was it going to be England? I haven't made the choice yet, to be honest. <laughs> I haven't made the choice. Come on, Adam. I, I mean, I played in the Origin game. There was a Lancashire-Yorkshire Origin game. Um, I played in that one, but I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Like, who should I represent England? Does that make sense? <laughs> Look, even no. Look at that woman over there going no, <laughs> no. We, we don't want you. One of us. <laughs> we don't want you. Yeah. <laughs> Go home. <laughs> Go home. But it did, um, yeah, it was it, a huge. But uh, you know, with everything that's going on in the world, the idea of taking 20 disabled people from Australia over here and yeah. 20 same from New Zealand was a bit much. So. Yeah. The fact that it's happening next year is a really big step forward. And the, look, the, the RFL and the Rugby League have just been so supportive of this whole thing. And it's actually better than in Australia, yeah. the way they've supported it. So it's, hopefully it's going to happen. In, in terms of what it's like as a, as a showpiece, as something to watch, I, I, I mean, it's one of those, isn't it? and Adam, you've said this a hundred million times, but if you haven't seen it, and yeah. even if you're thinking, oh, it's not for me, I'm not really interested in that or whatever... You literally just have to watch three, four minutes on, on YouTube, and it is, uh, it, it's, it's so addictive to watch, isn't it? If uh, there's you know, something it's, it's made for television. Yeah. There's something about the first game we played was at um, uh, Victoria Park at Warrington, and um, we were just talking about it, actually. I remember um, uh, Toa Koa Love played for our team, because each team has, a, has an able-bodied player on them, and Toa injured his back in the first five minutes. And he said, mate, I was in agony, but I looked around at all you guys and thought, I can't leave the pitch now. <laughs> but the first couple of hits that went in, you could hear the crowd groan. You could hear them just go, oh, because they suddenly realised, oh, these guys are serious. Yeah. They're playing full on. So, yeah, I mean, 
in the in the four years that I played, I fractured an ankle, been concussed, and I think we had our grand final two weeks or three weeks ago, and I'm pretty sure I fractured a couple of ribs in that as well. Oh, so, but it's, badges of honour. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, to see all these guys with disabilities that thought they'd never play rugby league again, getting to do it, getting to wear the the, the shirt of the team that they love, getting to play at places like. Anfield mm. and Halliwell Jones and we played at the ANZ Stadium it's enormous and it's mm. all these look, I can feel my face lighting up when I talk about it because it means so much to the, all the, of us the, the documentary did is one of the best things I've watched on television it was like a real feel good f uh, factor when you watch it and yeah. some of the stories are unbelievable and I, I I've, I've been watched the game as well but watching the documentaries and seeing the stories behind it it's truly inspirational for some of the boys that played. Every single person that plays disability sport has got a story. Yeah. yeah. Like, you just know they've got a backstory there somewhere. I mean, w when is the age to, to pack it in? I, I keep saying 51. <laughs> I mean, you, you look younger than me. But you're playing against kids who are, you know, out of school, just out of university. And, you know, people who are probably, because of the, the certain types of disabilities, they've, they've, they've got different athletic attributes to other people in the team. Yeah. I mean... Do you see yourself playing into your 50s, into your 60s here? When, when are you going to hang up your boots? Not that we want uh, you to. I mean, well, the great thing about Disability Rugby League is you can play red shorts, which means you're non-contact. So that's for people with spinal injuries or brain injuries or whatever. So technically, I could eventually at some age go maybe red shorts, but the contact's the fun of it. So I don't know. I guess at the end of every... I'm sounding like an actual professional rugby league player. You are player. a professional rugby That's I'll the just, whole point. I'll just wait till the end of each season. I'll see what my body's <laughs> telling me. See what the contract's <laughs> looking like. Do you know the like? most amazing thing I've found is I've been interviewed a couple of times when walking off the pitch. So we played a game and yeah. then you walk off the pitch and someone wants to interview. I've become every Australian rugby league player I've ever watched. All the cliches. All the golf. One game at a time, guys. You know, we're going to go in there and have a debrief and see what the coach has got to say. Full credit to the boys. Yeah, full credit to the boys. Honestly, man. the amount of times I've walked off, oh, mate, full credit to the boys. You know what? It was a really rough game and um, the, the boys gave everything. Full credit to the boys. The last leg, you've done a cliche ticker of it. You've got to have done that. Just how many you can get in. Game of two halves. You know, da -da -da. Who was your NRL side, by the way, growing up? South. Who, did, who did you follow in, in South, South, South Sydney? Yeah, yeah. Rabbitohs. And you used to go down, you used to watch them. Used to go and watch. Well, I grew up not not in the area. So when I was three days old, my dad brought a red and green toy rabbit into the hospital for me that I've still got. Um, so yeah, I used to go and watch them when they. So I grew up in the Cronulla Sharks area, yeah. weirdly, but I, I supported the Rabbitohs. In fact, we went and played against them in the World Club Challenge yes. for the Disability Rugby League. And it was the them. weirdest moment because we. We walked onto the pitch and I thought, I'm all right, I can play the Rabbitohs, mm. I'm fine, I'm representing Warrington, I can do that. And then they played the club song and I had to block it out. <laughs> I literally had to walk away and just sing. That's what, you, that's what you'll be doing next year when you're singing God Save the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that'll be, that'll that's be the weirdest bit. But yeah, so I've noticed, um, uh, I've, here's a cliche, sorry, there was one cliche I was gonna mention to you, mm. is my favorite is when a team plays like losers and then one of the, co the coach will say afterwards, I mean, look, the boys have been training really well. I don't want to hear that as a fan. I don't want to hear that they've prepared perfectly and still lost. And in fact, I think it would be better if your team won and then the coach went, I don't know how that happened. They've been training like shit. These guys are awful. They're not even working during the week. That's what, that's what I want to hear. Look, I mean, the, the grand final in Australia is something else, isn't it? You had... Tom Burgess, a good friend of yours, was playing for South, yeah, wasn't he, that, yeah, last yeah. week. How many grand finals have you been down to here at Old Trafford? This is my first. First one. Ooh. First grand final. I was at the Challenge Cup uh, final a couple of years ago when Warrington won. Uh, the only grand final I've been to in Australia is when the Rabbitohs won. I flew in back. 14. 14. Yeah, I flew yeah. back for that one. Wow. Yeah. Like landed when, on the Saturday morning. When Sam had a first, like a drop pie. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. That, that is like... Legendary among South Sydney fans. That was incredible. I mean, that put him on the map forever, didn't it, Sam? It did that indeed, one? yeah. I mean, what are you expecting in here tonight? Because, you know, this guy's played in a couple. These guys have been down here for years. They're, they're trying to do the hat trick, aren't they, St. Helens tonight? Yeah. Um, what are you expecting when you go into Old Trafford? Have you, have you even been in to watch a Man United game before? No, no I've no, never been into Old Trafford. In. Go on, what are you thinking? What are you, oh, how are you hello, feeling? Turf. Do you know what's great about this for me? It's because I ha I'm not supporting either team, I'm not nervous. Yeah, every other grand final I've been to, I'm kind of on edge and I'm tense and I can't enjoy it. So I can actually just enjoy this and watch it because it's a great game of rugby league. I would imagine the Saints are going to be more relaxed. They've been here before. They're more experienced. They know how to deal with it. Um, and not as nervous. But then Catalans are going to be excited because it's a big deal for them. So 
there's going to be a battle of like energy versus experience, I would have thought. I thought you were going down that nice. Ooh, I need to imagine St. Helens are going to win because you're playing to the crowd here and there's about two Catalan fans and one at the back, he can't speak <laughs> English and he's just ordering a bottle of champagne there. But you see this as a Saints victory. You see them going those three out of three. If I had to put money down... <laughs> <laughs> just looking around, if I had if to I put had money to, down. If I had to... If I had to say the words that would get me out of here with my life... <laughs> no, I, th I think Saints are... Yeah. I think if I had to put money down... Yeah, of course. You've, you've been here before. You know how to do it. And I reckon they're going to throw everything at you. I reckon they're going to throw absolutely everything at you and they're not going to give up. They're going to be full of energy right till the end. But I think it'll be, I think it'll be Saints. Nice. And look, before we let you go, Adam, because you're doing so many amazing things, I say, I say it's you, you know, there's a whole team behind you as well and you are a part of that team. And you've got some of your teammates down here as well. Yeah. But the obvious thing will be looking ahead to, to the World Cup and who you play for and so on. And, and next year will be a massively exciting year and a year, hopefully, that puts PDRL on the map even more than it is now. Yeah, and there's an amazing thing that's happening with PDRL next year. So one of their team, one of the, one of the guys that's joined their team is a former Super League player who had a motorbike accident about 10 years ago and had a leg amputation. Nico. Tawara Nico. Yeah, yeah. So Tara Nikau played for New Zealand, yeah. played for Warrington, great played for player. the Melbourne Storm. Castleford, yeah, great player. All of those players is now going to be playing in the physical disability rugby league team at amazing. next year's World Cup. And that's what it's about, isn't it? That is that is what that PDRL setup was about when it started in, in what? It was only, only 2018. That's what we need to say. In this country, 2018 yes. was the beginning, which seems like yesterday. We've had COVID in between, which has wiped out 18 months, which obviously didn't do you guys any good because no one could train and so on. Yeah. And, and even to be able to take it to a World Cup, given where the world has been in the last 18 months, is going to be magnificent, isn't it? It's going to be huge. It's going to be to get New Zealand, Australia and, and an England, England team. There's also talk of a Scotland team, a Wales team. And yeah, people like Tara and Nikau are just, I mean, we all want to go head to head with him. We won't want to afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be such a huge year for rugby league next year. And what's great is that you know, all the money that goes into the Rugby League World Cup is then trickling down to the club. So we've got a better training ground at Warrington because of the World Cup. So, yeah, watch this space. I don't know who I'm going to play for, but if that woman has her say, it won't be England. <laughs> She's still saying, go home. She's even turned her back to me now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're still building up to kick off here, but put your hands together, everybody, at Old Trafford for Mr. Adam Hills. Cheers, guys. Good luck. Genuinely good luck. Adam, top man. Thank you very much. Cheers.